All right, everybody, welcome back to the shop. So for the tools you will need for today's exercise, you'll need your drafting boards, which are all located here right next to my desk. And then you will also need a ruler. Remember, we have our rulers or yardsticks all hanging here in the cabinet. We also have a series of smaller rulers up here. You will also need a steel or carpenter square, which is hanging just left of the rulers here in the first closet or in the first worker's um, storage unit. And then you will also need some tape, which is here, and your T-squares, which are all available right here. All right, be good to the sub. All right, everybody, welcome back. Let me see if this is a good shot. Okay, I'm gonna do my best to make sure I don't move your drafting board. Uh, my last video didn't go as quite as well, but I would like to, so now we're doing a wide angle lens, or a wider angle so that you can see everything that I'm doing. Uh, so today we went over the drafting board and the drafting process of squaring up your piece of paper. And later we're gonna be going over the process of making the two cubes or rectangle shapes that you are going to be drafting your spatulas or kitchen utensils into on this drafting board. But before that, I wanna go over just one more time how to square up a piece of paper onto your drafting board. In order to do that, you're gonna need a couple tools. You're gonna to need A, your drafting board, this piece of plastic. You all should have one, they are to the right of my desk. They are all stacked up neatly. Please do your best to not hurt anybody else's drafting board um, or uh, rip their piece of paper off. It sometimes happens if you are not careful. You'll need your drafting board. You'll need a bit of tape, a pencil, a ruler, a T-square, and a steel square or carpenter square. These will all be useful tools for this process. I know we already did this yesterday, but just in case some people forgot, we're going to square up a piece of paper. Uh, or if you rip your piece of paper or you lose the uh, your board and you can't find it, so you have to get a new one. This is the process of how you do this. So originally I used to have students measure each side, make it perfectly square. I found that that was not absolutely necessary. It is more just the process of making sure that this piece of paper is squared to the board um, and uh, allowing you to use all the tools that we have at our disposal here in the wood shop. So I found the simplest way to do so is you measure the width of your paper, not the length, the width here. And I go to the end and find that this paper is 11 inches wide. So 11 divided by two is 5.5. I would go to the 5.5 mark. I know it's gonna be hard to see on the video, but 5.5 mark is here, five and a half inches. And I would make a mark on one side and then I'd make a mark on the other so that the piece of paper is square. You can square the piece of paper to your board. So. I'm gonna flip this over because I've already made two marks. I hope they're dark enough for you to see on the camera. Um, notice, I did not make a line. I have an example here. I did not make a line. If I made a line, if I forget, or if I go to the bathroom, or if I leave and I forget which side is the five and a half, I don't know which is which, and I would have to remeasure. So it's important that you either use a carrot like I do, I've seen some people use dots. Um, whatever your process is, um, uh, it is up to you, but I highly recommend the carrot. It is what I have used for years. It is my way of measuring, and that is how I get accurate measurements while I'm drafting and doing any type of work in the shop. So that is our five and a half inch mark. So what I'm gonna do now is utilize the T-square that we have I'm gonna set it, this is a nice 90 degree angle, so I know it is perpendicular to the board. I'm gonna set it to the edge. I hope I'm still in frame. Set it to the edge, make sure it's snug. I'm going to match up my lines. My carrot there. I'm gonna come down a little bit so it's a little bit more centered. My carrot here. Right there. Doing my 
this to make sure they're all squared up. That looks good. So, pull out a couple pieces of tape, put them to the side. You do not need a lot of tape. Just this little bit is plenty. I'm gonna apply pressure to make sure my paper doesn't move, double checking to make sure it's still in the same spot. I'm gonna tape up my corners. Make sure that the paper is not folding. There you have it. You should be all squared up. Now to make sure that we are square to the board, we can take our ruler again, measure from the edge of our paper to the edge of our drafting board. Here I'm at about three and a quarter, three inches and one quarter. I go over here, oops, I'm at exactly three inches and one quarter. So that is the process of squaring up your drafting paper to your drafting board. Now, once you have drafted, or sorry, once you've squared up your drafting paper to your drafting board, comes the drafting process. Since we have already made this all squared up, using this T-square is gonna be a lot more useful. This will become an incredible tool to help you create the two rectangles that will have your front and top view of your spatula. So I want to make two boxes, because we're gonna draft two images. One is gonna be the front of your spatula or kitchen utensil. The other is going to be the top view of your kitchen spatula or kitchen utensil. Uh, in order to do that, I'm going to make two rectangular boxes on this sheet of paper. The average kitchen utensil is about 14 inches by three inches wide. That includes the handle, and the cooking side or spatula of the kitchen utensil. With that in mind, I'm gonna make two rectangular boxes at three inches. I'm gonna try and write this upside down. Three inches. Um, three inch width by 14. Hope you all didn't see my bald spot. So those will be the dimensions for our rectangles. Now, when you are making the rectangles for your drafting, you are gonna make the lines very dark. Once you start drafting, however, when you start drawing out your shapes or your spatulas, you will not make dark lines. Make sure they are light. That way, when you do the final drawing of your spatula, you can make that dark and erase away your drafting lines. So let's get started. I know that this is 11 inches long and using my steel square or carpenter square, I can find out that this piece of paper is 17 inches. I know that if I take 17 inches and I wanna try and make my two rectangles completely square, 17 inches, if I want them to be 14, I'm gonna subtract three from 17, so I'm gonna go an inch and a half in, make sure I'm lined up, inch and a half in, make a carrot. From 17, make an inch and a half in, so 16, 15 and a half, make my carrot. Take my T-square, or uh, sorry, my steel square away. Using my ruler, I know that this piece of paper is <clears throat> uh, 11 inches wide, 11 inches separated by six, um, one three inch rectangle and then a second three inch rectangle. So what I'm gonna do just to keep my math simple is I'm gonna go one inch up from the edge, make a mark and then count three inches. One, two, three, make a mark. I'd like my boxes to be a little bit separate, so I'm gonna 
leave another inch. Or do you know what? Let's make it two inches. I'll leave two inches. So I'll make a mark here at five inches. And measure one, two, three. Make a mark. Now, because you squared up your drafting paper to your drafting board, you can now utilize all the benefits of the T-square and the um, drafting board itself. So because I know everything is square and perpendicular to itself, I'm gonna make one dark line right here. Going down. I'm gonna skip. I know the blank space in my boxes is gonna be. Coming over to this side. I hope I'm still in frame. Making sure I'm pushed up against the edge of this drafting board. Make another mark. I'll go all the way because I didn't make all the marks on the other side. Now going here, make one mark at the three inch. Come down here to my other mark. Now I have my first rectangle. Going back up to my other markers. Make a dark line. Cross. Dark line. And go across. And voila, we have our two equally sized drafting rectangles. I'm going to erase these lines so that I know exactly the edges of my drafting rectangle. All right, now that you have the two perfect rectangles, you're gonna start drafting your spatula. There are going to be two sides that you are going to draw, or sorry, there are gonna be two views that you are going to draw. One view is going to be the top view, and I want you to imagine that like this. This is the top view of a spatula. The other view, this cube or rectangle, is going to be the side view, the side I want you to imagine that. So in each of these boxes, you are going to draw one view. In one, you're gonna have the top view. In the other box, you're going to have the side view. The reason being is because when we are cutting from a piece of wood, we do not want to have to have a piece of wood that is this wide. It is very rare that you find a piece of wood that is this wide but also has enough material for me to cut up at this angle. So in order to make sure that we have enough lumber, we are going to cut the side view out of a stock of wood. The best way to explain it is that if I were to cut this spatula out of a piece of wood, I wouldn't be able to do it from this piece. The reason being, is it won't fit at this angle. I wouldn't be able to cut this shape out of this thin of wood. However, I could cut this shape out of this piece of wood and then glue on these two pieces afterwards. So, the importance of the side view is for us to have a drawing of what we are going to cut out for our spatulas on the bandsaw. We'll talk about this more, but this is the reason why I want a side drawing as well as a top drawing.
in order to make sure our spatula or whatever kitchen utensil you are designing has an equal shape, an equal drawing on this piece of wood or a piece of paper, we're going to create a spatula section. So most spatulas are about three inches in length. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a mark right here at the three inch in my rectangle. And again, because we know we squared up this image <clears throat> to the drafting board, I know that if I draw this line at three inches, it will also correspond to three inches here. So a line like this. Even if you are not making a spatula, I would still like for you to make this line. It is important that you have whatever line perpendicular to your two rectangle or your two drafting squares. The reason being is I need to know when your spatula begins and where your handle begins. So let's say, for example, you're making um, a crepe spatula. This line would be a lot longer because the spatula on the crepe spatula is significantly longer. So I would be able to see that this portion of your drawing is the spatula portion, and this portion of your drawing would be the handle. However, for the example of a spatula, this portion will be the spatula portion, and this portion will be the handle. I'm gonna have you grab your steel square or your carpenter square, and now is the point where you, where you will start making soft lines. I want you to make three marks. One mark very lightly from corner to corner. Very, very light. It might even be hard to see on the camera. One more mark here. Again, incredibly light from corner to corner. Finally, I want you to get your ruler, make a mark at 1.5 because we know that from here to here is three inches. There's three, 1.5, I'm make a mark here. And I don't need to make a mark here because I know it's squared up, but for the sake of the lesson, We'll draw one another mark here. And now, with my T-square, I'm gonna check the marks, oops. And draw my final, not super dark, line across. The reason The reason we did this is because we can use all these marks for measurements. For starters, I'm gonna make this my top view. This is not my normal handwriting. It is just hard to write upside down. So this is gonna be my top view and this here we go. It's going to be my side view. <laughs> I'm not gonna make the marks here because once you know how to do this, you should be able to repeat it here. So for my top view, I'm gonna try and make a similar spatula like this. So my spatula portion is just your basic square. You, this is where you can come up with your own designs. You can make unique shapes. You can make something all your own. But for me, I'm just gonna go with a basic spatula. Now, this handle is pretty straight, pretty plain, but I kind of like that, that simplistic view, short, simple curves into a square spatula. So I'm gonna try and recreate this on my board. The way I'm going to do that is using special drafting curves.
you'll find drafting curves like this in our classroom. Um, there will be different varying degrees of angles, and you will also see drafting circles like this. Again, another tool all for drafting. This can help you make an angle on your spatula. And the important thing to notice is these marks. All of these marks help you measure out the drawing of your draft. The reason I say that is because if I want to make this similar or perfect, I'm gonna have to measure out all these points. So if you wanna make your spatula curvy, you're gonna to have to make sure you make marks all along this drawing. So let's get started. I want my spatula to have a straight handle curving in to a square-shaped spatula head. I'm gonna have the curve start here because I want my spatula to essentially fill out the whole space here. I'm not gonna do much. So I want my curve to start about two inches back on this line. So two inches back is here, two inches back is right here. So I can take my drafting curve and I can recreate that mark. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line up this mark on my piece of paper and I'm gonna angle it to the corner. So my line is there, angling it to the corner, making sure I get it precise as best I can. Now this line, I'm gonna still go pretty light, but this is gonna end up being my final line. So in the end, I'm going to make sure that I can recreate this or finalize it with a dark line. I'm flipping this over, but I can still see this little mark here. Or sorry, I don't need to do that. The mark is here. I'm gonna recreate this curve, putting this line, the corner right here. Oops, I just hit my camera. I hope it's still good. I hope we're in shot. We are. Then I'm gonna take this mark and make a curve to that corner. So now, <clears throat> because I'm not gonna need these, I'm gonna erase these lines away. So I've gone two inches in here, two inches in there. And what I wanna do is since I know or what, I'm sorry. I'm gonna measure from this edge to here what that distance is. That distance is an inch and one eighth. So I'm gonna go over here and measure an inch and one eighth. So it doesn't look right to me, so I'm gonna go again. It is in fact inch just under one eighth. So go over an inch just under one eighth. I'm gonna make a mark here. I'm gonna go over here, measure in, and it too is just under an inch and one eighth. It should be because these lines are basically mirrored. So I'm gonna go over here. A little under inch one eighth. Right there. And now what I can do is using the mark here and the mark I made here, I can make my handle. Again, 
you can make your spatula as complex or simple as you'd like. I'm going for the simple look. However, I don't really like these squared edges or the squares on the end of my spatulas. <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do, this isn't necessarily the tool that I would call a draft, it's, well, it's drafting use, but I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna curve the edges here. Make it kind of nice. And then take my inside curve, curve the spatula here. And here. And now that I have my whole spatula drawn out, I'm gonna erase my drafting lines. And now I have the top view of my spatula. Kind of took out a little bit of a mark there. Fix that. Got these corners here. Get your marks. And voila. I have the basic start to the top view of my spatula. For your lesson today, this is all I would like you to do. Make your boxes, make them perfectly um, uh, equal, um, and then I want you to draw the top view of your spatula or kitchen utensil. That is what you're gonna be doing for today, and that is it. Thanks everybody. We'll see you on Monday where we will draw the side view. See ya.